Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Scott the Wise. Oh, fuck. Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to E3 2001 Scott the Wise by Scott the Wise. Now, I don't know anything about E3 2001. I wasn't even existing in 2001. So, I have no idea. I don't know anything about this video like it's mainly it's probably just gonna be going over uh, e3 but yeah if you didn't notice uh, I got like new headphones and uh, you know done some changing with a setup you know like uh, move my mic a little bit but uh, yeah anyways guys reach into the description make subscribe to Scott the Waz and subscription let's just get right into it hey y'all Scott here so it's about that time let's have the talk what? Talking about birds, bees, how bees On ice cream screen. The country, teaching the proper education I can tell. And I've learned it all from Dr. Dr. Crotch. So, let's start with chapter one. Luigi's Mansion. Oh. E320. Oh, wait. Calls. It's finally that time of the year. E3 2001 occurred from May 17th to the 19th in 2001 at the Los Angeles Convention Center as any E3 2001 would. And this year for gaming as a whole had some of the most iconic releases of all time. Okay. Massive console launches like the GameCube, Game Boy Advance, Xbox. The PlayStation 2 was still in its first year on the market and Sega finally did the right thing. Give up. Every time <laughs> we hit one in the industry where everything happens all the games released new consoles launch and the only year that i think even remotely matches 2001 it would be 2013 but even then i think overall oh, 2001 damn. may have been the biggest year for video games so i guess a lot of new franchises came out about then stop sucking the year off well let's dive into what occurred <laughs> True. in 2001 and as per usual be rating each major company's presence at the show on a scale of 1 to 5 yeah stars. okay let's start with a company that needs no introduction nintendo <laughs> okay. The final few Good years joke. Of the Nintendo 64. Well, they sure were years. We did get some amazing games during this time, but they were going up against the launch of the Dreamcast and PlayStation 2, alongside all the titles coming out for the ten times as popular PlayStation 1. Doctor Mario 64, brace yourselves, wasn't gonna cut it. And looking back at the history of E3s, the past few years really felt like Nintendo was spinning their wheels. While other companies were pushing forward with new tech, and Nintendo was saying, "No, -uh, we have a new console." All right, can we see it? You can see Mario Party 3. The 64 was just kind <laughs> of in existence for a while now, but E3 2001 was Nintendo's first E3 show for not only the GameCube, but the Game Boy Advance as well. Yeah, read off that spiral notebook. This isn't a press conference, it's a book report. We're still in that era of press conferences where press conferences were press conferences, damn it. For some reason going on about really? the there's a shot against the competition via graphs. Well, this graph would have more value if you show me the games that would give it a shot against the competition. This conference had the theme of the Nintendo difference. What? Oh, a brand of paper towels? Now, according to <laughs> Nintendo, the Nintendo difference is this. An absolute fetish for quality. Hey, guy, what's your fetish? Uh, well, yeah, what? Quality, quantity, the pursuit of happiness, ass and chips. Satori Iwata comes on stage just a year before... Fetish for quality? Nintendo, ...discussing how games all look the same and really leans into the Nintendo difference. Now, over on Nintendo, in comparison, it's all about innovation and quality. They released this a month prior. <laughs> comes out on stage and holy sh**, he's one hand in that bitch! Bill Trennan accompanies them for translation and introduces the first game with the concept of trying to figure out what characters to bring to game you first <laughs> oh yes yeah, smash yeah and then oh yeah dude such an awesome trailer wasn't this smash 64 oh smash melee Technicality. Super Smash Brothers Melee revealed to the world with the opening cutscene and a short overview of the characters. They don't spend long on it, considering you get the general idea of what this is by reading the title. Yeah. The reveal will forever be one of the best E3 moments, as you can tell just how giddy and excited the audience is. Watching it now is like opening a time capsule. Whenever Samus appeared, everybody roared, since this was during a large gap between Metroid games. Zelda and Sheik were given a huge applause compared to the one guy recognizing Ice Climbers. Scientists studied this. Oh. One man remembered that much.
much ice climber. <laughs> Melee was the Smash Brothers series. That's a good joke. Fun party fighter to a massive gaming event. The bombastic orchestral music, gorgeous graphical upgrade, iconic characters paired up with those who haven't seen the light of day in ages. Melee's reveal was the perfect introduction to GameCube and also showed this console was hopeless. You practically launch a system with a game that invokes this kind of reaction and it gets third place. This marked a change in Ooh. consoles. It was no longer enough to Smash have Melee is probably the, the most popular and the most liked or a gimmick and the Smash. GameCube had a calendar. After Smash, we get a look at what's called the next in the Mario series. Oh yeah, Luigi's Mansion. Ladies and gentlemen, the next in the Mario series. So I like Luigi's Mansion, but the way it was shown here felt more like a joke. And I think a lot of critics had this feeling towards Luigi's Mansion when it Ooh. first launched. The stigma that it was lame as shit. You're not getting a Mario platformer at launch. You're getting his drippy nosed brother with a shop vac. As time went oh, on, yeah. the players come to appreciate this that screen. Lot more. But at E3 2001, the main thing Nintendo pushed with it was how it utilized the GameCube's capabilities. They showed off the controller, which the Wave Bird has a different button layout from the wired one. Why do that? The game discs, which Nintendo bragged about being severely anti-piracy as a selling point. Here's our product, and the best part about it is, you can steal it! The GameCube startup is shown prior to True. the- True. Hey, oh, GameCube it intro. As it should. And we got a demo for Luigi's Mansion, which again, was created to show off the GameCube's capabilities. Dual analog control, along with tons of elemental effects. It was impressive, no doubt, but the fact it wasn't a Mario game and was a Luigi game, it just made it kind of lame for many. It's pretty shallow that various people thought that way, but that's what the general consensus was at the time. And the way they showed it off here, well, fine, I think undersold the game quite a bit, even if it looked very graphically impressive. Interestingly, they state right after the demo how the Game Boy Advance can be used as a GameCube controller, but the way they talked about it implied it would work with Luigi's Mansion, which would have made sense. I mean, you have the Game Boy Horror in the game to have a map screen on the Game Boy screen at all times would have been handy. But no, they just move on to more graphs and spec talk, which is very unlike Nintendo. What is like Nintendo is to show us something we can't have. Pure heavy. <laughs> True. DVD player was shown here for spice. They just kind of show it like this is for the Japanese market. So I don't think they ever really had plans to bring it over here. But they also had it on display at the E3 2001 show floor. If I had to guess, even if they were never oh, going to sell it in the U.S., just having a GameCube with DVD playing capabilities at the show would be enough for people to think the GameCube was actually worth a damn. It, yeah, you can play DVDs on it. You just uh need to be able to deadlift 400 pounds. Some developers are shown in a video talking about the GameCube, namely Silicon Knights, Rare, and Retro Studios, all showing off games that were barely real. Retro had Ravenblade! I yeah, sure, honey, I'm on the phone. Rare had Cameo and Donkey Kong Racing, but titles like Metroid Prime, Eternal Darkness, and Star Fox Adventures were displayed, with Star Fox Adventures having the subtitle of Dinosaur Planet. This is awesome to see in the context of an actual press conference. For so long, I've only known of the origins of Star Fox Adventures through articles or random trailers, but actually seeing it alongside Donkey Kong Racing and Ravenblade at E3 shows, it's pretty wild and gives a much better idea as to how these games were positioned back then. Next up, we have a brand True. new game from Nintendo. Pikmin. What the hell was that? Nintendo announced Pikmin as their next Pokemon in the sense that it may not make sense now, but just you wait. Give it some time. A quick demo is shown, and yeah, it's it's true. Got the idea of Pikmin from gardening. You're selling a console. The GameCube is set to launch on November 5th in North America, September 14th in Japan, and 2002 in Europe, to the audible disappointment of the audience. Liar! It actually ended up launching on the 18th in North America, but I'll let this one slide due to the scissor reel at the end. Star Wars Rogue Leader, Raven Blade, Wave Race, BS, NBA Courtside 2002, BS. Donkey Kong Racing, Animal Force for GameCube. Interestingly, they announced this a month after the game launched on the Nintendo 64 in Japan. Metroid Prime, oh, Mario what? Kart for GameCube, just using Smash Brothers character models and go-karts. Mickey <laughs> for GameCube. All right. There's Isn't that game bad? Things on that infamous Zelda for GameCube demo, showing a realistic Link and Ganondorf fighting. To which one year later, we got a puppet show instead. Why wasn't any of this sprinkled throughout the press conference? Instead we got, did you know the GameCube is going to do well? Well, if you showed me Mickey for GameCube earlier, that wouldn't be a question. There's quite <laughs> a lot to like about this showing, though interesting to note, Nintendo barely talked about the Game Boy Advance. For that, you'd have to check out the show floor. This giant screen saying, fun fact, to ensure innovation, we employ the strongest and most successful exclusive game development resources in the world. That's not a fact, that's just smug. I love True. this actual GameCube logo and the Game Boy Advance demo units showing games like Mario Mario Kart Super Circuit, F-Zero Maximum Velocity, Mario Land 4, this was a damn good show. Though their presentation seems better on paper because when you actually watch it... And more innovation will be on display when our Space World exhibition... Brings me 
right back to economics class. Yeah, yeah what? Like there were a lot of games, but it was primarily just Smash Brothers, Luigi's Mansion, and Pikmin. Everything else was just sort of thrown in a scissor reel. They still did a good job impressing, and that's more evident by taking a look at the show floor, though Nintendo just didn't show much that clawed people away from the PlayStation 2, unfortunately. Yeah, Smash Brothers looked amazing, but did that make up for the relative lack of third-party support? To some, yeah. And I think something big Nintendo proved this E3 was a massive change to their software output. That slowed down to a crawl on Nintendo 64, but with the GameCube, they showed off a ton of exclusive games in development, most of which came out within the first year or two. Nintendo in 2001, keep it up. Well, let's take a break. Hey. E3 2001 Four memorabilia. to five. These Activision 02 hats were given out. Activision 02 was a sub-brand they used for their sports games. Because sports require oxygen. Yeah, oh. what? That was fun. Let's move on to Sony. Oh, what yeah, the true. What PlayStation did this year? They have the best-selling console of all time. Again, so why even try? Well, Kaz arrived. Just stepped off the golf course. It's crazy. <laughs> Sony executives there so long ago. Uh, Jack Trenton, Andrew House, the king's all here, which means their first announcement must be big. First mule debut, a DVD wireless remote. I stand corrected. Fucking huge. Gran Turismo 3 gets a trailer, even though it's already been out in Japan. Jack and Daxter gets a trailer and demo, being the big holiday title for the PS2 that year, being poised as the PlayStation 2's Crash Bandicoot. But who gives a shit when the PS1 LCD screen is announced? It even says right here. The PS1 is you still the of Sony's business. While the show is all about PS2, they still intended on giving their first console some proper support. Sony's done that with all of their consoles. Even when the PS4 came out, they released Gran Turismo 6 exclusively on the PS3 a month later. They highlight that Square will remain exclusive to PlayStation consoles consoles for the time being, which showcased how powerful this partnership was at the time. But with all this power and having the most successful Wait, console Square the Enix time, was partnered with them? Minutes of EA Sports. Wow, Madden 2002's on the PlayStation 2, these mad sons of bitches finally did it! If this was the first Madden, Madden on 91. PS2 or... Madden 92, yeah. General, Madden 93, yeah. Conference. Final Fantasy X is shown. Like, my God, can you believe how fast they were pumping these games out at the time? Final Fantasy was oh, yeah, Final a Fantasy. series at this point. 7, 8, and 9 coming out one after another made some sense with them all being on the same console, but 10 was for the PlayStation 2 and still released just a year after 9. They show a movie trailer for Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. Then we dive you into what? some other big PS2 exclusives. A long, long speech about Devil May Cry. Then on to Silent Hill 2. And finally, a, a long speech. Solitude, which was pretty much E3's darling game at this point. Grabbing everybody's attention, this was the killer app for the time. They end things off with some accessories. A PS2 network adapter and hard drive along with an LCD screen, keyboard, and mouse for... Who did this? What? I have seen the PlayStation 2 marketed as a straight-up desktop PC. They say this is for email. This! They also show a bit of SOCOM kind of to push the what? of the console. With the Xbox looming over, that was... that was smart to do considering that system is what? the PS2 in terms of internet connectivity. Uh, yeah, you know, Sony did have the some PlayStation the 2 side, was a PC? Obvious, not only did they have the biggest names, they had all the names. The amount of games on display for PS2 was staggering. And while Nintendo gave you a reason to check out their stuff... Sony gave you a reason to buy their stuff. The PS2 obviously had a tremendous future in front of it. We were even talking about streaming HD movies to the console. This! I may be a Nintendo... What? We'll say fan. And while E3 2001 had a lot to make Good me joke. happy, it was Good also joke. obvious who was going to truly win this generation. Let's return Five to and E3 a Four and a half. Here we have an E3 2001 program giving out on the second day of the event. It's designed as if it's a magazine, featuring advertisements that look ripped right out of one. Except they're actively begging you to check their booth at E3 out. This is absolutely fascinating. Reading articles detailing the announcement of Kingdom Hearts, which, yeah, debut here, in a match made in gamer heaven. What? Articles detailing Xbox and Nintendo's booths, giving attendees the motivation to keep it up. What other companies have brought to the show, whether it's games, hardware, accessories. There's interviews, conference schedules, maps, the Mario Awards. Nintendo of America would award their retail partners with Mario Awards based on categories like their catalog, magazine, promotions, in-store flyers. That gave good motivation to advertise Nintendo. See, we could put the PlayStation there, but we're neck and neck with Sears here. Do Wario. Hell, even advertisements for DVD scratch removal. Okay, that's actually right funny. Here. That's the actually funny. It feels like I'm where I don't belong. Long. Shuttle services and food options. Namco is outright begging for applicants. This is an awesome piece of E3 history that truly does give you the feeling of actually being there. It's a little big, though. But what's this? 
Xbox? Who's that? Oh, well, Xbox yeah. had a presence at E3 2000. 2001 was the year of the system's launch and gave us a much better idea of what we could expect. The console's design was finalized, making it much more consumer-friendly. Oh, come on, that's a choking hazard. And a little game called Halo, which was shown last year, went from a third-person game for PC and Mac to a first-person shooter launching exclusively with Xbox. This was always this the This is the biggest. Xbox. As outside of that, it was a pretty mediocre show for them. They were still in the peach fuzz era of understanding gaming. They got it much more than other companies did, but this was their first console, so the hiccups were to be expected. However, going against Nintendo and Sony, Microsoft had a few technical problems during their conference and not nearly as many games on display. They had Dead or Alive 3 as an exclusive for launch alongside Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Racing games like Project Gotham and NASCAR Heat impressed, but Microsoft's booth was half Xbox and half PC gaming. The launch date of November 8th, 2001 for North America was announced. LIAR! November 15th. LIAR! Japan would occur before Europe, which many people already knew was a mistake. The Xbox has famously never done well in Japan. Many knew the Japanese market wouldn't take to Xbox, but Microsoft sure wanted them to, considering modern gaming was practically born in Japan. But all this did was waste Microsoft's time by launching in Japan before Europe and piss off customers in Europe because they had to wait longer. All for a retail price of $299, which was fairly expensive, but with the Xbox being the most powerful of the main three consoles and with Halo as the killer app, it suffice. But it's pretty clear, without <laughs> Halo, this would have been a pretty weak showing. But Microsoft came out swinging with one of true. the most iconic launch titles of all time. That's actually true. And that's got to count for something. Grand Theft Auto 3. Yeah, there was quite a lot more to this E3 than just what the Big 3 brought to the table. Namely, Rockstar brought the Big 3. I even have the final part of E3 2001 memorabilia, the sticker they gave out. Right, yeah, take a look at that. Okay. Wait, Duke what? Nukem Forever made another appearance, this time looking quite a bit different from the last time we saw it. This one showcasing how truly expansive the game was going to be. Look at all these environments, characters, things to do, epic music. None of it ever happened. Yeah, I was going to say, was didn't that game not exist? This year, making deals all over the place with the announcement that Dream Or it didn't come out. And Sega as a company would become a third party. Each console manufacturer made a deal to get a certain Sega franchise on it exclusively, most notably Sonic on Nintendo. The sheer amount of massive industry-defining games to come out of this E3 is unprecedented. Prior years felt like growing pains, but E3 2001 truly does feel like where E3 became E3 from there on out. Wait a second. Now I'm just confused. Okay, so honestly, this was a really good video. I really did enjoy it. I liked it. I thought it was very funny, very well edited. I also love the pacing of it, how it's just going from one showing to the next and just ranking it. Yeah, honestly, it was really good. I actually loved it. I, I really did. But yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the like, the video, subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye.